Hi, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching with a trade review for Friday, April 11th, 2014. This is going to be a brief trade review. I uh, wanted to go over a couple of pieces early on uh, to see if I, um, just to follow up with the uh, market preview. Now, one of the things I want to point out was in the market preview, one of the things I pointed out was that first of all, this was towards the, we're getting towards the bottom end of the old current trading range that we're in. What that means is when we were in this area before, this um, 1800 to 1807 was the bottom of the range, 1830, 32 was the top of the range. Okay. Uh, the second thing is we tend to go in patterns. When we have long liquidation days down, which we had Thursday, the next day tends to be a balance day. Most balance days look like this. Uh, this particular balance day looked like, um, well, it kind of, uh, there was no push lower. We, we didn't push back because the push lower came so early. Usually this push down comes earlier in the day and then we push back up to close like this. Uh, so it was a little bit different looking day but we still ended up with balance after a long liquidation day with a lower close. So the other thing that I mentioned uh, coming into the day was to look at the tick and that if the NYSC tick was greater than negative 1000 out of the gate that it's very common to find responsive buyers out of the gate and that often, in the strongest markets, that response looks like this. We'll gap down and then we'll push all day long. In the strongest bull markets, that ends up being a trend day up. In this particular case, if you look at this, we ended up with a, range, a failed range extension from the open, right? Obviously, it was gap down from prior days, but intraday, it was failed range extension, right? Um, again, the basics of the zones, right? First time into the zone, which is this right here. I expect a pause and or response to buyers, not necessarily off the open, okay, uh, but first time into the zones, um, really after the first 15 minutes. Um, it's a lower odds off the open is what I want to say. Um, so if you look at the first touches of the zones, first touch he here, first touch here, and then first touch here, we got exactly what the zone's job is supposed to do, which is to pause and give a rotation back higher. Uh, this is a lower odds trade because of how late in the day it came, right? My primary primary focus is in the morning. Secondly, why did I know, uh, several of my uh, coaching clients asked me, why did I know to take this trade long? There was only one reason that I knew that, and that was this right here. Tick out of the gate was negative 1,000, um, I believe 1,080 was the lowest tick that we had, right? And you can see that's, and if you go back and look in the video prior that's posted from the market preview, I showed, we'll gap down and then we'll just keep driving straight up, right, through the morning. Um, now obviously we didn't drive straight up and the conditions have changed a little bit from three weeks ago. So uh, NQ is a little bit of help in, determining, in terms of determining guidance. Also, um, I'm pretty sure, I can't swear to it at this point, and I'm not gonna go back in and watch it because I'm tired, but I'm pretty sure I'd said, first time into Thursday's low, uh, considering where we were opening, the size of the rotation, that I would be taking a trade to the to the short side, uh, was able to achieve that without a problem. Uh, I did not take a um, I took an NQ trade up here, but I do not think I took an ES trade up here. And then I passed on this trade in the afternoon. The reason why I passed on this trade in the afternoon <clears throat> was because it was late in the day. We were almost at two o'clock. I hate taking counter trades late in the day. It's thinner. You have fewer participants and the likelihood of it getting busted or higher. In addition, I already had a monster day this morning. I pretty much caught this rip up and this rip down. <clears throat> and then uh, over at NASDAQ, <clears throat> very successful scalping trades almost all day long uh, in the NASDAQ. It was an extremely profitable day for me. So I was already mentally tired here. So um, I think I covered the reason why it reversed. Let's go through some of the other clues as to, um, and, and the biggest reason again was not that we were at this Globex low, we did have a trap trade going off here, but more importantly, the huge negative tick off the open indicated panic. And often in bull markets, that panic leads to a uh, move higher. Also, in an open drive higher, right, in terms of determining whether it was a balance day or not, open drive higher, um, the first five minute bar, if we were gonna, in open drive higher or open drive lower, right? In open drive lower, the first five minute bar will not be penetrated to the upside um, in most cases. In this case, uh, clearly, uh, we had that broken. So you knew right here that we had a significantly diminished odds of having a 
trend day down, right? The next piece that was very important, look at the balance here, right? Plus or minus 500. The majority of the morning, right, through here, plus or minus 500. There was a few, given a few extensions down uh, later in the day when we started to break down, but the majority of these were plus or minus 500. That's indicative of balance. What happens in balance? In balance, we uh, have fake breakouts, right? and fake breakdowns, which is what we had through here. And even in here, right, they snapped it back up at the first and brought it back into the range. And then only at the end of the day were they finally able to um, bear a little bit of selling power on it. But really, we closed right at the bottom of the range, 1811 and 3 quarters, right? And the majority of balance was right in here for the day. Something else I wanted to point out. This trend day down is from Thursday morning, right? We've never penetrated back to the upside of this down move. Okay, and that's the first thing that needs to happen to get any kind of move back to the upside. Additionally, in the morning when we were coming up to Thursday's low, we were still below this trend line, the late afternoon swing high, right, uh, with the very end of the day swing high. We were unable to break above that. You'll notice when we did break above it, we rejected right in front of it, and then we busted up. Um, and then the natural logical thought would be, well, we're going to come and test the backside of this trend line. And we did, but I also mentioned that even when we get above trend lines, we can just kind of dribble them and follow them on the way back to the downside, right? We did eventually get, we had almost, well, pretty darn close to this trend line right here. It just didn't do it in the morning, that's all. So uh, let's go back to trading and how do you turn all this? Because these are all seem to be um, non cohesive pieces. How do you turn all this into actually a trade that works? I want to cover that for a second and then I'm going to wrap it up because it's Sunday afternoon and I want to relax and enjoy it before we have to go back to work tomorrow. Um, what is important about this chart is a couple of things. First of all, I didn't know that we were going to get response buyers out of the gate. What I did know was to look for an extreme negative tick and what happens the majority of the time. What did I have to be able to do in order to take this trade long was one thing and one thing only. I had to understand that we had a large negative tick and I had to be willing to accept a three point loss which I said I would increase my stop loss behind the back of the zone, right? Those are the two things I had to be able to accept to participate in this trade, right? If you waited to figure out whether the trade would work or not work, right, you missed this trade. Your entry would have been so high by the time you realized that we were reversing that your risk would have been huge because your stop would have always obviously been at the minimum behind this swing low. Um, the second part. Tick went to plus or minus 500 rather quickly, particularly after news was released, right? We got a rotation up, we got a rotation down. The rotations up, right, were pretty darn close equal to the rotations down. That's a change from the prior day when the rotations down were much larger than the rotations up. So it's a new piece, although it's to be expected on a balanced day. Secondly, NQ wasn't breaking out to the um, uh, above pre prior day's lows. That was a big sign as well. We were down 30, we came just positive on NQ, and um, we were unable to sustain that positive reading uh, when we tried to move back to the upside, fell apart, that was another clue. Trading, okay, is both a technical setup that you can have confidence in taking, and putting together random pieces through observation, and realizing how those pieces are playing with each other. And if you approach it from that standpoint of how's everything interacting with each other as an observer, Okay, you have a very t easy time adjusting to whatever the market's throwing at you. You have your set trade, meaning first trade into the zone, right? But uh, beyond that, in terms of figuring out your trailers, right, and what the market's likely to do, you realize once you got this that regardless of whether you feel the market should rebound up or the market should be flying down, what the market's telling you here is that we are in balance, okay? Don't fight that market. What gets generated in balance? Choppy market conditions where we tend to dribble up and dribble back down, just like we did right here, right? Secondly, we had new lows. You can see there's a tick divergence here. We had new lows on, uh, on a five minute bar. Uh, new lows without new lows in the tick. That was the first indication of tick divergence. And then over here, we had new highs, right? With no new highs in the tick. You can see the divergence there. By the way, I don't trade off of five minute tick divergences by themselves, they are very expensive, uh, expensive ways to uh, trade. Uh, this is a bigger picture and I don't want to go into a super detailed uh, exercise on tick divergence using a one minute chart. But that's where I would zoom down to is a one minute chart to use tick divergence for actual trade entry. Uh, next, what was the other clue? 
the downtrend line from Thursday morning never penetrated, right? Also, a note to, tra to people who lost money chasing the trades. This, okay, these breakouts that fail, breakdowns that fail, are signatures of a balanced market. If you have an inability to identify whether we're in a balanced market or a, uh, extend, a range extension market, you're going to have a hard time getting consistent in any in any market, no matter what you trade. Bec um, the market and the market changes, right? We go from balanced, imbalanced, balanced, imbalanced. We'll stay in balance for a couple of days, then move out of balance. Now, usually the out of balance doesn't last very long. It's been that the recent period of time has been the exception, not the rule. Um, what people usually want when they're day trading is they want a set structure that they can come in every day and follow those rules, kind of like as if you were playing poker, right? You know what your odds are, you've got, you, you see what the river cards are, and then you know, you know you have certain odds of playing out of hand. The good traders tend to be good poker players, but good poker players aren't always good traders. And the reason is, is because we know that trade location gives us the highest odds, right? You'll notice that no matter what happens, first time into the zone we get a pause. That's why I trade the way I do. Because almost, in almost every type of market, I still get the pause at least. I don't know how far the rotations will be, and I don't know what the direction will be necessarily, right? But that's what the trend lines help me with in terms of getting guidance. That's what the tick helps me with, right? And that's what the price action does. I constantly monitor the size of these rotations so that I can see and learn how different markets react at different speed. Also, the speed of the market matters if you're a trader. There's a lot of traders that simply because of the speed at which this moves, right, they are intimidated by these moves and then they want to wait until it's nice and slows down. It's a lot easier, right, where they get markets like this to make trades and they're like, oh look, it's consolidating, it's spacing, we're probably going to move back up. The problem with that is you have no way when we're consolidating like this, it's very difficult to tell other than, by the way, this is the third touch of this zone, right? But when it's consolidating like this, people start to feel safe. They're like, oh, it's not going to go down anymore. Look, it's holding the space, it's going to move to the other side of the range and they get comfortable and they take losses in trades like this. When markets consolidate like this, they have the opposite effect on me than they do than it seems on most traders. When I see markets consolidate like this, I get fearful and I want out of my position. I don't want to stay around longer. When I see markets that are like this, in and out quick, that's my market, okay? Now, traders want confirmation, they get confirmation in these markets and I'll say this again and again, confirmation is expensive in uh, futures markets. It's a very high premium you're paying for that confirmation. Same thing here, you go, oh look, we're holding the break, right? We're consolidating above, and then you get crushed. Okay, so like I said, confirmation is a big no-no. Time is not my friend when I'm trading. I need my moves to happen relatively quickly, right? And then my respect of my own trading rules for stops, my uh, proper planning of both increasing my trade size and, um, and consistency in trade size. All of those things go to reducing my anxiety while I'm trading and in turn reducing the anxiety of those guys that I'm coaching, right? And then we get out of that fear mode and we go into observation mode because we pretty much already know what we're going to do based on what the market gives us. That is why it's very difficult for me when zones are near to say pre-market, I am taking a trade here or I am taking a trade there, right? Had we hit this zone in the morning, I would have taken a trade undoubtedly, which is why I actually said, and I actually said I would take a trade in this zone, which is why I had to go and call it off um, later in the day because it was just too late in the day for me to automatically take this trade and I was tired. But had we gotten this move early in the AM, the pattern that I was preferring that we take would have been open drive lower, come into the zone, rebound, and then come up for a test into the gap fill and perhaps club X high and then close back over here. That's what I was hoping we would get. So also notice that I didn't allow what I wanted the market to do to prevent me from giving me, prevent me from taking the money that was being offered to me by the market. What I did is I had several options, which I laid out pre-market, and then I went and take a look and I said, okay market, I know what your options are. I know what the prob probability is of you can either do A, B, or C. Now, you tell me which one you want to do, and I'll adapt my trading, my entries, and my exits based on what you want to do and I'll respect you. You're the leader, I'm the follower. As long as you're going to try to dictate your terms to the market, you're going to remain a losing trader. But if you'll humble yourself to the market, right, uh, and say, these are, these are where I'll respond. I'm an ambush, I'm a guerrilla fighter. I'm going to ambush the guys that make a mistake based on what the market offers, okay? 
you become much more agile and making money consistently becomes much more easy. So I hope that that made sense to some guys and that helped out um, um, hopefully a lot. If you're losing money, don't keep drawing down your account. Go to paper trading until you get it. Get some help. If not from me, there's a lot of good sources out there from people who can help you. Okay, I'm not the, I don't consider myself the best trader in the world, nor the best trading coach for that matter. If our personalities match up and our psychologies match up, I'm very effective at getting guys profitable, right? But if they don't, there's other guys out there. I'm not certainly the only solution, nor do I want to be the only solution uh, or the end-all be-all. Secondly, day trading is not for everybody. It's difficult. You can lose a lot of money. It can be extremely frustrating and stressful if you're not ready to take what's being offered. Okay. And the third is if you'll make this more about solving the puzzle and getting the solution more than you're making it about how much money you're making. The money's nice. Don't get me wrong. Money's nice. I'm all for it. But if you don't make it about the money, right, and you stop worrying about your balances, you'll notice this is my trading screen. I've got no account balances anywhere on here. My trading domes have no P&L on them. I know how much I'm up or down in points. I know how many contracts I'm trading. I can do, at least with a calculator, very, very basic math, right? I know if I get two stops back to back, I'm done. And that keeps me from getting blown up. So um, you should have, in my humble opinion, similar rules that keep you from getting blown up, that lets you take advantage of whatever your particular edge happens to be. These zones, this trade location, these are my edge. I don't need any of the rules besides these trade locations first time in. I know I have very high odds if I can't figure out anything else, right? I don't have to make it any more complicated than just first time into an area, click me off each time, right? And I would have gladly taken a trade up here. Had this been earlier in the day, I'd gladly taken a trade here. Okay, just click me off each and every time we get to a zone. The majority of the time, I know that I'm going to make great money. Some markets will be better than others, but I know that if I'm consistent day in, day out, and I take my trade consistently day in, day out, that uh, I will be rewarded. All these other little things, the tick reading, the um, rotation size, the um, NQ leading, NQ not leading, these are all additional filters I can put on my trading and adjust. But I try to look at it all through a lens of playing the game and, um, and learning what the market's trying to teach me. And one of the most important principles I have is that I never miss a trade. Missing a trade is very dangerous from a coaching standpoint. Instead, what I say, and this is directly from um, Mark Douglas, right? Instead of missing a trade, if I could have gotten that trade, I would have gotten that trade, okay? And since I didn't, it simply means it's actually good news that I have more to learn, okay? But if you go, man, I missed that trade, all you're going to do is try harder on the next, and the next is highly likely to be a losing trade because you'll find yourself forcing things instead of waiting for the market to set up an ambush, right? So anyways, guys, that's all I got. I certainly hope this helped. My name is Simon. I'm a trade and perform coaching, and uh, I'll be doing the market preview on uh, Monday morning. We'll talk to you later, guys. Have a great night. Bye.